Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Women's Range Day Masterclass Series by the She Shoots. This is episode five, Ladies' Range Day Event Day. To quickly recap, we have organized a series into six episodes where we will cover everything you need to know about hosting a Women's Range Day. Episode one, Ladies' Range Day Getting Started. Episode two, Location and Planning. Episode three, uh, episode three Marketing and Promotion. Episode four, organizing and logistics. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it. They come back to episode five. No rush, we'll be here for when you're done. Episode five, event day, and episode six, follow up. Before we get started, I'll introduce ourselves and thank our sponsors. I am Regina Ruiz-Ordanez, director of the CUSF Women's Division, Deneen Tomlin and Casey Gavinchuk, founders of Lady Guns, and Kelly Melanson, director and senior instructor of Maple Safe Project. Thank you to our sponsors, Cabela's Canada Outdoor Fund, positively shaping the future of the outdoors. Every cent donated by writing up at checkout goes towards helping Canadian organizations just like ours. Savage Arms, home to the Steven single shot rifles and shotguns, Beretta, family owned and operated since 1526, and Vortex, the best in optics. On today's episode, episode five, Ladies Range Day event day, we will be covering the following topics. Advanced communication, final logistics, volunteer O group, safety briefing, safety briefing, response plan, medical plan, safe space to learn, outline of the day, and photographer. Thank you, Regina. So now that we've talked about logistics, we can get on to uh, the day of the event. And it's important that you let people know where they're going and certain instructions. Um, so those can include uh, a map to the range, um, special instructions uh, for the range. So if they have a gate policy or you have to let people in, um, clothes and equipment. So if you need um, hearing protection, eye protection, if you can't provide it, um, uh, no low cut shirts, um, dressing for the weather, no closed toe or sorry no open toed shoes there you go <laughs> um expectations for the range uh and if you need to bring if the if your attendees need to bring uh food or water okay. um usually you would take you would send this about a week before the event uh with a reminder of when it starts where it is that kind of stuff um also you can take this time to encourage people to to take pictures have a hashtag that you can um, give out to everybody so that when they post on social media, it goes under one. Um, include your uh, volunteers on the mailing list yeah. so that they know what's going on too. Um, I think that's pretty much it for events. All right, so let's get into the final logistics of the day. You're going to have to do a little prep before the women get there. You really have to do. One of the biggest recommendations that we have is show up early. So let's say your event is the ladies are coming to the event at 10. It starts at 10. Make sure that you show up with plenty of time and so, so that you can prep everything. Uh, so 8 a.m., have everybody show up. That includes your volunteers too. So when you're sending out that advanced communication to the volunteers, make sure you, you tell them to come early and what they're to bring as well. So as I said, prep the site. So you're going to make sure that to the each of the stations have a supply of ammo. They have their guns. They have targets, reactive targets. One of the other biggest uh, things that you have to prep the site for is, well, for women, we like to be able to use the bathroom. We just can't pee off into the bushes. So if you haven't already done so and made the preparations for a porta potty uh, cleaning to happen, go out and clean the porta potty. Or if I would recommend if it's a flushable toilet, you'll have a, a lot of happy people there, but make sure that the, the uh, toilet or the bathroom is clean as well and stocked is, and make sure it's stocked. So the other thing that you want to do is make sure that the registration table or the check-in table is all set up. And on there, you're going to make sure that the range liability waivers or any other waivers that you have to have signed are there. 
um, make a decision on what you want to do with the swag bags. Um, what we are, what we mean by swag bags, a lot of times sponsors will provide you with items that you can give out to the attendees. So some people like to take those swag bags and distribute them at check-in. And sometimes they like to do it uh, later in the day. But if you're going to make uh, do a um, swag bag, and distribute it at the beginning of the day it's a really good idea because in there you can include snacks and bottles of water too to make sure that people are uh, fed and hydrated as they go th through uh, the various um, disciplines or different stations one of the last things at the registration or check-in table that we want to make sure that people have is ppe so eye and ear protection now when you are doing the advanced communication as uh, casey said sometimes you'll or you'll put it out to people and say bring eye and ear protection if you have it but if they don't have it make sure that you have some on site at that check-in could be also sponsors you can get the sponsors to provide uh their ppe for you so you, that you can have it on your check-in table and speaking of sponsors a lot of times sponsors will want to attend the event so they can have an area set up with, with tables or maybe they're on the firing line when they like to do a try area. So a try me area. So it's the latest product that they would like the attendees to try. So make sure that they have a, um, a spot available to them, whether it's a table that's at the event or even on the firing line or if they're, you know, what, if it's on the um the um, compound um, bow range or wherever it is. We just want to make sure that everybody is there early. The site is all prepped and ready to go before the attendees get there. Deneen, do you want to talk about volunteers and uh, making sure that you have a, a discussion with them? I would love to. I, I think it's so important. We've done all of this work. You've done all of this work. Your group has worked uh, tirelessly and you need that event to, to, to go as as flawlessly as possible. And you wanna make sure everybody's having fun. And if you're disorganized, uh, it's less fun. And so uh, what we need to do is to make sure after all of those things Casey and Kelly have talked about, that we are prepared as organizers to do safety briefings. So our volunteers have arrived early. We wanna make sure to give them their assignments and their safety briefing and their roles and responsibilities. Uh, even if they're working a, a lunch table or a reg table, they need to be aware of the safety of the range and the operations of the range itself. The volunteers in every area need to be aware of medical response plans. And so it's really important that all of this is prepared and signage is available and handouts to your volunteers so that they know in the event of an anything, it, whether it's somebody needs a Band-Aid, somebody's looking for the toilet, uh, they need an extra bottle of water, that they've been briefed on all of that. So that is a volunteer briefing, which includes a safety briefing, preparedness and readiness. We also want to encourage all of our volunteers to remember that this is a safe space for our attendees to learn, come out and have fun. And so we wanna make sure some of those really excited volunteers don't take this opportunity to try and teach. That's for another day. Just make sure they're safe and they have fun. This is not the time to tell stories of the day back in uh, whenever, when we were having some kind of competition, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, safety briefing part two, uh, this is when our attendees arrive, they've come through registration, they're excited, they're nervous, uh, they're looking forward to the day. Our volunteers at, at the registration desk have greeted them and maybe they have a swag bag in their hands. This is the time when the event organizers make sure that everybody can hear the rules of the range, they make sure they know how the range is going to operate for the day. They have a, a clear sight of who the range officers are. And maybe if we have guides that how they're going to move them around. And then we get into the thing that everybody gets a little squeamish about, which is talking about an emergency. So it's really important as organizers of an event to have an emergency plan and a medical plan. If you're at a city range, then they probably have one inside uh, and they can help you with that. If you have uh, your range day happening out uh, at a more remote location, you need to know your GPS coordinates. You need to know how you're going to get a hold of first responders. And 
especially you need to know that your volunteer group might have some people that are medically trained. And it's really important to know who you've got in your group that can help you in the event of an emergency. You need to have all of that as part of your safety briefing. So it's not just PPE, eyes and ears and band-aids and sani wipes, but also the other stuff in the event of an emergency. So we do a safety briefing for everybody and now all of our volunteers and all of our attendees know exactly what to expect and they know how to respond. I think that covers safety briefings. Yeah, let's get into the outline for the day. So uh, you really should have a briefing with the volunteers as well as the uh, attendees on what to expect from the day. Now, we've already covered some of it in the advanced communication. But again, just regroup or recap it once they get to uh, the event itself. Um what to expect from the day. It includes things like taking pictures. Are they allowed to take pictures? We want to really try and encourage them to take pictures, but obviously if they're handling a firearm, they can't take their own picture and do a selfie. So um, when we were breaking, it's a great idea for people to come in groups. It's especially if you're doing a, a, a ladies day or a women's uh, day, we know everybody, we as women travel in pairs. So, or groups. Um, so, logistics for it so you can talk about well if one person is shooting you can t you can take pictures um back of the firing line so just to make sure that people have a good understanding of what they can do and what they can't do and then also give them a clear definition on what to expect for lunch or food so lunch is provided today and this is when we're going to be doing it um, you may actually also want to cover with them the prizes typically with sponsorship you'll they'll be provided with prizes so they've probably already been given a swag bag or maybe not maybe they can have to stay till the end of the day to get that swag bag or to actually get prizes sometimes organized organizers like to have the prizes done at lunch or sometimes at the end of the day so just let them know what's going on and what to expect what about a photographer Denise? Well, I think that one thing that we often forget about is that we've put this big event together, but we need to capture it. We need to uh, to help capture those moments. So I love the idea that you guys talked about. Bring your cell phone, take your photos, use your hashtag. But as an event planner, get a mm -hmm. volunteer to bring a camera, take some photos, some group shots, a group shot of your volunteers, a group shot of your ROs a great couple of shots for your sponsors. It's really important to have somebody dedicated with some plans to make sure that those pictures are taken. I've been to events where there's a drone taking aerial footage shots uh, at range day. So photography is really important. And I like the point that Kelly added that there's some waivers and some releases uh, if there's gonna be photography taken on site, but don't forget the photographer because it's something that really makes those memories uh, last and allows you for your marketing next year for the next event to have some really good stock photography that is actually from your event. So we're gonna also talk about how this works into the follow-up and the aftercare on the next episode. So thank you so much. We've covered the advanced communications, the registration, the importance of what we need to do to get the range ready, the safety briefing, and then covering off how to take pictures and, and images of the day. And I think that really covers our range day. Awesome. Thank you so much. So if you like the masterclass and would like to see more content like this from us, please leave us a like and follow us. You can watch all of our masterclass series episodes on the CUSF YouTube channel and the Lady Guns YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you liked our message and would like to learn more about our programs, check out our websites at CUSF.ca, LadyGuns.ca, and MapleSeatRifleman.com. To support us and get some additional perks, check out our membership programs. Thank you all for joining us on the fifth episode of How to Women's Range Days Masterclass Series Event Day. Make sure to watch episode six, Follow Up, already available for your learning pleasure.